What's up, world? And it's another edition of the Primetime Angles, the premier sports betting show with the one and only Primetime Capper, Pop DiBiase, baby. And um, you guys already know what it is. Um, also, you guys, if you guys are into betting, for real, for real, and, you know, just not listening to me yap and yap about sports, you know, that's what my I do. That's what my business does and everything like that. You guys can go to mybookie.com, sign up. If you guys got to be brand new, though, put in the promo code POP, you guys will receive up to $1,000 in a deposit bonus. And I'm telling you, man, it is a great deal. My bookie, they pay out accordingly as well, too. Um, you know, so pretty much go ahead and give them a uh, look see Lou. And you guys go ahead and check out mybookie.com. Put in the promo code POP, and we'll go from there. And make sure you confirm for me so I can go ahead and put you in the sweepstakes. So, you know, you can get yourself some free merch and things of that nature as well, too. All right, man. So let's go ahead and get this thing started. And uh, today's episode, we are going to go ahead and uh, start off with the NFL. Um, to start off with uh, today because as you know there is no preseason in the NFL this year and pretty much with no preseason that means that we're going to get directly to the season and a lot of our dreams have been answered because a, a lot of people really like to skip preseason because you know you have those horrific injuries that kill teams bro that kill the whole season for teams and you really don't want that to occur but the downside of it is, is the undrafted free agents that won't really have the opportunity to make a team now teams are pretty much set with the 53 that they know that they're going to come with but still there is still hope i think that undrafted free agents are usually um added to the roster through great practices not games i've seen guys perform so well in the game and they're undrafted free agents they come in in third fourth quarter they do great jobs but there's just not enough room on the roster for these fellas and so boom they go ahead and they get cut and then it takes them a while to get back get get their niche in the game it happens because you know some of these guys are playing for superstar teams that just don't need undrafted free agents so i'm just thinking about the guy danny amandolas of the world and you know pretty much those players and I just really think to myself that these guys still will get an opportunity. Maybe this year it's going to be very slim. But other than that, these guys should be able to, you know, step up their game and um, get on a roster if they fit that roster. So, you know, no preseason games. It's a gift and a curse. It's a curse for guys that are on their last leg and for guys that are literally trying to make the team um, from nowhere. So, you know, pretty much... He, you lose that element, but at the same time, we get straight to business. We get straight to who's going to be on this roster, and the first week will be games, and we can all take it seriously, and we can all pay attention. So it is what it is, and I think they did a good job of saying that we're not going to compete with the NBA and the NHL. We're going to let them have their time. We're going to let them you know, finish up their seasons because when we come in, we know we're going to about to take everybody's attention. So it is what it is. The NFL, um, no preseason games. Once again, no preseason games. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about hard knocks. And as you guys can see on hard knocks, we have the Rams and the Chargers. Both are moving into the brand new beautiful SoFi Stadium. The Rams are the landlord and the Rams are the rentee. So they are kind of in a Lakers situation. But people have to remember one thing about the Lakers and the Clippers situation. This was a deal that was made to, you know, make it easier on both teams and on the Kings to where everybody pretty much gets a good good share of the revenue and things of that nature. But the only reason why the Clippers are seen as a rentee is because they don't have ties to AEG like the Lakers do and like the Kings do. So all in all, really, everybody's paying rent to the Kings to be that honest with you. So pretty much that's Staples Center. But over here at SoFi, this is literally the Rams running out a space to the uh, Chargers. But the Chargers, they came to L.A. to get a brand new stadium. And that's exactly what they got. But we all know, and my friends down in San Diego know this as well too, there's a lot of rich people in San Diego. Come on, have you ever been to La Jolla before? It rivals Beverly Hills in, in every single way. And it might be a bit nicer because there's a beach right next to it. So... Pretty much, you know that there's money down in San Diego to make a brand new stadium. It's just was that the people of San Diego were not going to build that stadium. So it is what it is. And at the end of the day, if they're able to get themselves a 60, 70,000 seat stadium, 
I would know that the Chargers would be definitely invited back down to San Diego. But we talk about that a lot, about the Chargers belonging in San Diego. But let's get over that fact for the moment. They are in Los Angeles. They are slowly getting a fan base as well, too. So that is something that you do have to respect about the Chargers. And the Rams, we all know, we're all kind of getting ourselves prepared for those old school OC Rams about to, uh, you know, about to take over because it seems like they're going to be rebuilding for a few years now. I thought maybe they were going to walk into this new stadium as one of the more dominant teams in the NFL. It looked like that, but last season they took a few steps back. I think this year with them flying under the radar, it's going to be much better for them as well too. And so we'll see how it goes, but I still think though at the end of the day, the Rams are going to be really, really struggling to really stay at the top of the, um, NFC West. You got to deal with San Francisco and you got to deal with Seattle as well, too. And you do not know what Arizona is going to bring to the table. They were a much better team in the second half of the season than they were in the first half of the season. They also were able to get a uh, upset over the Rams as well, too, at the end of the year. So, hey, you know, we just got to go ahead and look at this thing and say to ourselves, hey, you know what? This is going to be something that is going to be a very, very, very tough division. But Rams, Chargers, August 11th will be on Hard Knocks. You guys tune in. It should be a lot of fun. All right, let's go ahead and get into the A. Let's go ahead and actually get into horse racing uh, first uh, because we have the horses coming up at 220, and I do want to get that out to the people right now. So pretty much with the horses today, and let me go ahead. I'm going to have to try to get this one this over to my um, actual... Um, because that was the one thing I forgot to add to my show list, the show notes today. And I need to go ahead and do that so you guys can go ahead and see exactly what I'm talking about. So hopefully we can get this picture taken real quick while I got you guys here. So give me one second. All right. So over here putting it together, about to break it down for you guys real quick. So. Just bear with me a few more seconds. All right. Done. Save the photos. Let's go ahead and airdrop it over to this bad boy right here. Yeah, but all in all, we will be covering, we will be on Emerald Downs today. That's going to be up in Washington uh, State to be exact as well, too. So. So perfect. So it went ahead and paused for me real quick, but we do have that one up here. So let me go ahead and get this situated, put in here. So there we are, Emerald Downs for today. And uh, Emerald Downs, our shot of the day comes in the first race today. It's going to be with a horse by the name of Stormy Mist. Um, we've uh, we've actually went over this before with this horse, uh, Stormy Mist. This horse is a, a horse that I'm kind of keen of. This is going to be what we call a bet back as well, too. But let me make sure that this is the correct horse because I always find a, find a way to... Yes, and it's going to be Stormy Mist at this point right now. Stormy Mist was a 10-to-1 morning line. I accidentally put the 6-to-1, but right now the horse is 17-to-1. Patrick Henry Jr. is going to be riding this horse as well, too. So I know that this is going to wind up being a good race because it's very it's a very wide open race. You have a uh, race that's between horses that are 4 and up three and up, things like that. These horses have been around the block a little bit. It is a low claiming race. They're only going to be uh, running for 6.8K as well, too. So that's very low. This is a low claimers as well, too. So this is a wide open race. So we're going to roll with the six Stormy Mist. Um, actually, the horse right now is at 17 to one morning, but I was putting in the morning line and the morning line was actually 10 to one. So our pardon my mistake, but that's exactly what it was, was six to one. So there it is. Um, uh, it's 10 to 1, but I had 6 to 1 in there on accident. I didn't have time to actually uh, remove it. So it is what it is. But we're going to pair this horse with the 1, the 3, and the 4 here. Um, you guys can go ahead and box this up, and it would be a 1, 3, 4, 6 box with the Exacta Try and the Super Effective. Or you guys can key the 6 with the 1, 3, 4, and we'll see what we can do. But that's an exotic bet for you. But if you want a win play show, you know, go ahead and throw your 20 across the board. That's a $60 bet. Go ahead and throw it on stormy mist if that uh horse comes in and it holds at 17 to 1 you could come up on a nice nice come up a uh, 340 dollars if you put 10 on it you can get back um 18 bucks i mean 180 dollars but 
and the two dollar bet for it is 35 bucks so that's why i'm going ahead and breaking it down giving you guys a little bit of that betting one-on-one when it comes to horse racing now we move on and we have ourselves race five over at um emerald downs this is going to be our best value race of the day i'm going to roll with the horse by the name of moloff moloff is a horse that's uh coming back it looks very good on the uh track and the races that i've seen is going to be trained by blaine wright who's actually a very good trainer from the northern california area he's known for many wins over at uh golden gate and he, he's all over the coast you can catch him in washington you can catch him north in norcal or you can catch him over at uh del mar uh los alamitos or um santa anita the he's all over the place on the west coast he has some really good horses as well too and i think moloff is another one that we could take we i like a lot and this horse actually is a morning line seven to two but i know that this horse will be three to one or lower than that seven to two is just for right now morning line but we always have to understand the over and underlays and this looks like it's going to be an overlay in my opinion because this horse is going to be down is has dominant numbers that really call for this horse to win today yes the horse did finish third last time out but he is stepping down in class as well too so we're going to see how this shakes out but i like moloff today the number two horse you guys can go ahead and box this horse with the three four six or you guys can go ahead and um key this horse with the Two being your key horse and then adding in the three, four, six for that one as well, too. All right, so that's going to be our best value of the day. This is another claiming race at 6.6K. All right, so we move on to race number 10. And in race number 10 today, we have ourselves a really good race. We got ourselves 10 runners here at the end of the night. And I'm going to go with the horse that looks really, really good. And this horse is going to be trained by one of Asmussen's kids as well, too. Dion Asmussen is going to be training this horse. Lorenzo Lopez is going to be riding the horse. And this horse has some really good numbers. It did finish fifth last time out. This is its fourth race, but they are bringing the horse down in class. And the horse has the numbers to sh that's can best this field i think that the horse if it hits the front and it gets brave it won't look back and i think it could best this field as well too so we are going to be really gambling here this horse is already seen as a 12 to 1 so the uh odds makers are kind of saying that this horse might not be a horse that you might want to jump on but they're putting the 12 to 1 on here because the horse is resume the horse hasn't placed in the money yet but it's fine it is fine now i think this is the type of race that fits the horse i think the condition is perfect it's going to be a really good uh maiden claiming race and you know the horse is a small climber and everything like that and once again if it's under ten thousand dollars on claiming races the race is wide open all these horses are exactly the same nobody's that much of a standout but some horses have ran in better fields and sometimes it gets overlooked because the performances that they had just like if you're playing against the best if you're playing in the best league then and you're one of the worst players then boom you can go to the mediocre league and be one of the better players so it is it works like that in horse racing and i think tonight we'll be able to get ourselves a nice winner at the end of the night 12 to 1 but most likely you probably go off in the 9 8 to 1 as well too once you see that asmussen name because you know their dad is one of the best trainers in the game so We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. But that's going to be a wrap for our uh, races today over at Emerald Downs. Tomorrow I will be on earlier, so then I can make sure that I get you guys Del Mar because Del Mar looks like it, it will be a four-day meet this week since they did take off last weekend. All right, so let's move it on. Let's go ahead and get into the ALNL West preview for the over-under wins. And up first, we're going to talk about the AL. And we're going to talk about last year's American League champions first. That's going to be the Houston Astros. The Astros are coming in with the persona of public enemy number one. Everybody wants a piece of the Astros after finding out what occurred with the sign stealing and everything like that over the last few seasons. And it was very, very, very much a hot topic um, most of the start of the year and when people talked about baseball all they could talk about was the Astros going ahead and stealing signs but let me go ahead and game you guys up real quick Boston got in trouble for the same exact thing the Yankees have said to be investigated about it but they not gonna they not gonna sit up there and say the Yankees did it but let me give you guys some cold hard facts I'm a Dodger fan the Dodgers had a real struggle getting past the Cardinals for years. And one year, the Dodgers were much 
much better team than the Cardinals. And they had the home field advantage. It was the opening round of the playoffs. The Dodgers went up seven to zip with Clayton Kershaw on the mound. And then all of a sudden players started getting walked. And then all of a sudden, next thing you know, the game was tied. And then the Cardinals got ahead. And the reason why this occurred was because they literally were stealing signs and even admitted it, you know, right after the game. They even said, hey, the Dodgers left all their signs wide open, so we just took advantage of that. So I'm just giving you guys a little bit of history to where this is not really seen as a big deal in baseball. I know it does give you an ulterior advantage, but all of them still signs. That's why they're so protective about the signs as well, too. I'm not saying that it's right, but I'm just saying that it happens. And it wasn't something that people get violated for. They said that you need to be more somebody told me that you need to pay better attention before you start complaining about something like that so i took that to heart and said okay so you have to be paying better attention and if you didn't catch it then you shouldn't be whining about it it's that simple but i'm not siding with the astros or or anything like that i'm just letting you guys know that everybody in the mlb at some point, still signs because sometimes teams are just that open. Now, when you see a bad team beat up on a really good team, 17-2 to two, or something of that nature, don't you put that in your head that maybe they might have been, been had some type of ulterior motive or some type of advantage to what can help them out. But all in all, let me get down to the point. Astros public enemy number one. This is already putting them in a bad spot. And I feel like this team is going to break bad to start the season. They're going to have to catch up. They're going to be in a tough West this year. And they're not going to be the team that they've been in the past. And I got them under 37 wins here. But you guys, don't complain. Don't just rag on Astros. Everybody at some point does the extra BS. And it's that simple. It's that simple. All right, we move on. And let's go ahead and talk about the L.A. Angels of Anaheim. I just like to call them the California Angels or the Anaheim Angels. They are nowhere near Los Angeles. They're about an hour out in Orange County. They should be called the Orange County Angels, but it's all love in LA County. It's all love in Orange County. We all one big happy Southern California family. Even though some of us think differently, it's all good because the Angels fans know that they got fans in Los Angeles that support them immensely, that were never Dodger fans, and they love the Angels and love everything about the Angels. We got kids that grew up on Angels in the outfield, and they love watching the Angels and everything like that. And the Angels do have a little bit of the bragging rights right now. They were the last team in Southern California, Los Angeles area, to win a World Series. So it is what it is. And, um, you know, pretty much last night, they looked decent in their um, game against the um, Dodgers. You know, I know it's just a warm-up preseason, whatever, BS game. But, you know, the Angels, they went out there and they they showed some things. And, you know, they still got Mike Trout. He's going to play. You got Pujols is going to play. Then you got Rendon. So, you know, you got the, the Angels have the lineup that says we should be in the playoffs. But they got the pitching that says that you could possibly be in the basement. So, Honestly, I don't see them getting past 32 wins, and I don't really see them, like, being worse than, say, 31 wins. So, I'm kind of stuck in the middle here. I feel like this is going to actually push. I think that they land right on 32, to be dead honest with you. So, that's why I feel like we have to go ahead and say this and say, all right, Angels, you guys are going to be a team that everybody's going to look at the first few weeks and say, what can we do with you guys? And I think, honestly, the Angels could be a good value bet for you as well, too. So it is what it is. But the Angels, I got them under 32 wins as well, too. And here goes the team I really like in the AL West this year. And that's going to be the A's. The A's got it all. They got pitching. They got hitting. And they got a good bullpen as well, too. And they got some animosity as well, too, because they fought. They fought, they caught the Astros, then they caught a bad moment, and then literally the, you know, Astros went ahead and ran off with the division. But they actually went to the point to where they were a game and a half back or a half a game back from the Astros who had a substantial lead in the at early part of the season. So the A's are a team 
that always finishes strong. And when they get into a groove, they are tough to beat. And with a shortened season, this is a type of team, if they start off very well, they're going to probably finish very well as well, too. I like everything that, about the A's this year. I actually am pegging them to win the American League West, even though I feel like it will come down to three teams uh, with the Angels, Astros, and the um, A's. But I'm going to talk to you about another team in a moment, too, that does loom the danger as well, too. But right now, though, the A's seem to be the the kid the kid on the block that's coming with the you know the the toughest uh the toughest mojo and everything like that so we're gonna see how it goes but a's i like you over 33 and a half wins let's do it all right so we move on and we have ourselves the seattle mariners and actually i'm so sorry i'm actually covering this up so if you see it on the side view it's gonna be over 24 and a half wins for the mariners i think they're gonna improve this season you have to understand this team started off 13 and 2 last year they have a lot of players still from that lineup they got rid of the excess fat that meaning that old old guys with big contracts that can't play anymore they're not on the roster anymore They got a good, nice youth movement over there in Seattle as well, too. And they're very unsung. They're very underrated, and they're very overlooked. So I think that Seattle does pose a chance to be a 25-game winner. They they probably are not going to come anywhere near winning the division. But once again, this is going to be one of those teams, when you catch them on a good day on the road, they will be able to get you a big win at a plus 250 or something of that nature. So don't sleep on the Seattle Mariners. This team is a team that can present a lot of value for you. All right, so we move on, and I know this is going to get my boys in Texas all riled up, but man, I'm telling you right now, the Rangers are a 30-win team. Over 29 wins seems like a layup to me. That team has all the power. They have a lot of power sitting over there. The pitching is always the question. The hitting is never questioned, but it's always the pitching. The starting pitching can be decent, but it's the bullpen that really lets them down and this year if they can put it all together somewhat and just figure out how to win games and close games at that the rangers should be one of the more dangerous teams in the league as well too and i'm just talking about from a value standpoint because you guys will understand better as i break down the games on a daily basis and give out the strong bets and everything like that that you guys can run with or you can fade. But I think Texas is going to be a team when you see them at plus 180, plus 190, plus 200 and above. You got to take that ticket because it's been good to me the last five years. And I think that we can continue that process as well, too. So the Rangers over 29 wins. Let's go ahead and see what it's all about. But it is what it is. Over 29 wins. Texas Rangers. Now we move on to the National League West. And you guys make sure to check it out on Zingo TV. I'll be talking about the NL West again with my man, Captain Lou Gamelin, who um, is going to be doing the MLB preview and everything for 12-ounce sports. So you guys be on the lookout for that one. It will be on channel 761 on the Zingo app. You guys can go to the Zingo app and go ahead and put in the promo code 120Z. And you guys will be uh, will get access to um, Zingo for free. Because the actual subscription I think is about 2 bucks. But you'll be able to get it for free. You guys turn on channel 761. I'll be over there a part of their MLB preview. But much love to 12 ounce as well too. That is one of the uh, outlets for the Primetime Angles radio show. And you guys already know that that's where I did the radio show for the past few years. But we're going to be going more to a streaming situation uh, when we do return to 12 ounce. So I'm just giving you guys a heads up on, you know, the future. So we move on and let's talk about National League West. And we're going to start off with the Diamondbacks. The Diamondbacks, you know what? At first, I thought they were going to be much better. But after what I saw the other night against the Dodgers, the Dodgers absolutely absolutely manhandled them. Like, seriously, like, it wasn't even fair, in my opinion. Like, the Dodgers were really having batting practice against these guys. And I know it was just a practice game, a warm-up game, but they didn't show me much. And I know that they were playing with a lot of guys that are probably going to be sent down and not really a part of this team this season. But still, you can tell by their energy that – they not feeling this whole shortened season thing and starting this late in the year and 
kind of getting themselves back in the rhythm and all that stuff. It seems like it's going to take a bit for that team to get it together, and I think it might be way too late by that time. So that's why I got them going under 31 and a half wins. But I think they could uh, possibly surprise us as well too, but you never know. It's just the way that the game is looking. They look like they're going to be a team that will probably be in third, fourth, or fifth place. But if they do really look good this season, they could challenge the Dodgers for the West. But that's my two cents on that. Under 31 and a half wins on the Diamondbacks. All right, now we move on to the uh, Rockies. The Rockies are a team that really, really wants to rebuild at this point. They want to get rid of all that big money that's on the table right now. Um, you guys already know, Arendo has been put into so many trade talks since signing that big deal not too long ago. And they're looking at trying to get rid of him at this point. Uh, just, you know, shore up some money and get some more prospects and things like that. And that's what the uh, Rockies have always been good for. Signing players to big contracts and then sending those big contracts to contenders and then coming back and getting, you know, their top prospects. And then the, re then the process starts all over again. The Rockies will forever be a team that will finish third, third or worse in the West Division if they don't fix this. Um, when they went to the World Series, they had those guys with the team for five, six years, and they were they had became killers after a while. And they were able to get a few really good pitchers to go ahead and do their job. And if they can go ahead and get some decent pitching this year, they could be better than 27 and a half wins. But I don't see that happening. I see a team that really can't wait for these 60 games to be over so then they can have a full season to go ahead and actually put their brand new team together of a lot of prospects. So I got the Rockies going under 27 and a half wins. We'll see how it goes. But once again, this is another team that will present some good value in games where they're not being taken seriously. Because one thing that the Rockies can do, they can hit. And hitting in the MLB is literally the name of the game. That's how you score runs. So boom, there it is. Under 27 and a half wins with the potential of you know, if they able to get some pitching, they could be better. But I still think they go under 27 and a half wins. Because when you get the hook, you, the under is your good friend. You know what I mean? You you kind of got two. You, you kind of got two horses in the race when, with that one. You know what I mean? Because if they hit 27, you still win. But if they go over, then boom. So you don't have to think about any pushes with this. That's the whole thing. So we move on. Let's go ahead and talk about. You know what? I'm going to say the Dodgers for last. Let's go ahead and talk about the Padres. The Padres. Oh, boy. Where are my San Diego people at? And I know that you guys, once again, I'm covering it up. I'm so sorry about that. But I have the Padres going over 30 wins this year. I think the Padres are going to play some damn good baseball. They got a nice young roster. They got some future superstars on deck as well, too. It's all about Manny Machado's effort, though, in my opinion. If Manny Machado shows out and has an MVP-type season, then the sky's the limit for the Padres. But if he comes out lackadaisical and plays half-ass like he has over the last three or four years where he'll step it up on, at some points and then he'll just go into a shell at others, then San Diego can just think about having another middling season. But this is a season for the Padres where they have a lot of excitement, a lot of potential moving forward to be a really, really good team. And I feel like this will be the team that will test the Dodgers a bit, just like they did last year. The Dodgers and Padres had some really good games last season, and they've always had some really good games. And the Padres, even in their lowly states, have always given the Dodgers a tough time. So, you know, the Padres in a shortened season, man, when their mind is on beating L.A., man, I'm telling you right now, this could wind up being a very intriguing situation that comes down to the final weekend of the season. So I look forward to it. I know Padre fans look forward to it, but man, you guys could do a lot of good things this season if everything comes together and the injuries are limited. But that's my two cents on the Padres, over 30 wins. Even if they don't make the playoffs, I still think they win 32 games. Sorry about that. I'm over here doing my Al Pacino right now. Got slobber and spit coming out while I'm talking, so sorry about that. Um, but, you know, 
It's all good. Y'all can rip on me later about it. So here we are, the arch rival, the San Francisco Giants. And you know what? I'm not biased. I'm not uh, I'm not a homer like that. I'm not going to sit up here and be like, oh, man, the Giants are trash because I'm a Dodger fan, blah, 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 blah. The Giants are just trash because they're just trash right now. They're over here picking up every injured old veteran. They Their farm system is kind of broken at the moment. They don't really have that many good prospects coming up. Their best One of their best players is going to be sitting out the season as well, too. And honestly, to be dead honest with you, do you think that this team is focused on baseball right now? I think this team is focused on winning social media at this point. They are doing some great things. You know, they threw out the female first base coach the other night. And then, you know, they had the whole kneeling with the Black Lives Matter situation. And then go out there and really, you know, just kind of just are out there playing baseball. Like if you played at the park or something, I don't think baseball is the the top top thing on their agenda right now. I think their agenda is to make sure that they're, 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 they're PC for everybody. And that's the only way I feel like the San Francisco Giants can get any attention this year is by doing things like that. But much props to the first ever lady coach that was able to be on field last night and also much props to their team for going ahead and taking a silent protest real quick about the uh, tragedies and issues that have been occurring in our country as well, too. So much props to them about that. But we all know that. All that stuff, a lot of times, is for the social media talk and for you to get a brand new set of fans that might not watch baseball. So that was some good marketing by the uh, Giants in itself. And, you know, much props to you. But at the end of the day, y'all still going under 24 and a half, 24 and a half wins. I don't even think you guys make it to the 20s, to be dead honest with you. Giants are going to have a really, really, really one of those seasons where they'll be ready to throw throw the season away after the first few weeks, uh, in my opinion, but we will see, we will see, don't take me, don't, don't take, don't, don't take me so seriously, you know what I mean, because you know what, these teams can outperform my prediction, but that's how I feel, under 24 and a half wins, now last but not least, we're going to end the show with them boys, the team that everybody has went through to win a World Series over the last five seasons, in 2000. Was was it two? And let's get it started. Well, the last four seasons, to be exact, in 2016, they were able to uh, valet the Cubs to the World Series. In 2017, they were able to um, choke it off at home in Game Seven against the Astros. I don't care about sign stealing, dude. They couldn't hit for anything to save their life and tried to blame the whole situation on Kershaw. That was absolutely stupid. And you, Darvish, knew better than to keep throwing them same pitches that Houston always used to nuke out of the park. So it is what it is. And, you know, they chauffeured them to a championship in 2017 and literally were just the host of the Boston coronation of when they won the championship in 2018. And then the bottom really fell out last year. The Washington Nationals, who barely made it into the playoffs, had to have a miracle moment in the eighth inning to even get to the Dodgers. They wind up beating the Dodgers in five games, and they didn't just beat them. They smoked them in game five. Right after the Dodgers went up two zip, the Dodgers scored no more runs after that. So was it still sign stealing, or was it ineffective hitting? That's the whole thing. So, you know, I had to dog the Dodgers before I uplift the Dodgers. The Dodgers got the best roster in baseball. They got the best pitching. They got the best hitting. And they got a decent bullpen. That's the problem with the Dodgers. The bullpen is not what you want it to be yet. And hopefully they can get some of these young arms or some of these savvy vets to be in place to really be able to hold this bullpen up and get them to that final inning with Kenley Jansen who's probably only has about a year or two left of being a dominant closer as well, too. And I'm telling you right now, this is something that we really, ooh, man, it's getting hot, huh? So, man, I'm telling you right now, this over 38 wins, I think it's going to happen because the Dodgers aren't going to lose a lot of home games, to be dead honest with you. They get 30 home games, 30 road games. If they say win 80 to 90% of their home games, then they only need to win so many role games this year because, to me, you winning 40 games is like you winning 100 games in the MLB this year. All right? And it's going to be tough to 
would have a team win 40 out of 60 times. But the teams like the Dodgers, they've done this year in, year out the last four years. So we're going to see exactly what the Dodgers are made of in this shortened season. And they did get probably the biggest trade of the offseason by acquiring Mookie Betts. And David Price, I would I want to mention him too, but David Price will be sitting out the season this year because he doesn't feel like it's it's safe to play baseball. So, you know, you got yourself uh, Mookie Betts, who looked really good in his uh, at-bats uh, the other night and everything like that. So, you know, Mookie trying to get that money as well, too. From what I'm hearing right now, they're working on a 10-year extension of $358 million. So, hmm, I'm telling you right now, if that the Dodgers are pretty much committing themselves to making Mookie Betts the face of their franchise. So, as I said before, for Mookie Betts to really make a splash and really impress upon us people in L.A., he better have a big season and help deliver that ring. That's all I can say. But with that, we're going to go ahead and we're going to wrap this thing up, man. This is the Primetime Angles Live on IG. And this show is brought to you by... I'm going to wait for the fade to come in. Prime Wave Media Group. So, once again, this show is brought to you by Prime Wave Media Group. You guys can catch the replay on the YouTube, or you guys can go to my page and go to the IGTV, and it will be sitting right there. But this is uh, volume number three on IG Live. So, you guys, thank you so much for participating and everything like that. I know I probably didn't get that many people in here, but make sure you guys just go ahead and view it. I know it's lunchtime. Everybody's enjoying. And also, one last thing. Rest in peace, grandma. My grandmother passed away this morning. And, um, you know, um, I'm just over here staying strong for the family. But RIP, Granny Fanny. And um, I love you, baby. And um, that's all I want to say. I want to make sure I shouted her out as well, too. But you guys have a beautiful day. I'll be back at you guys tomorrow. I'm going to be interviewing my man, George Racone, as well, too, for Fanatics View. And then we're also going to go ahead and break down opening day of the MLB and where are we going with the bets all right so you guys stay tuned this is the premier sports betting show the primetime angles and I am gone